Welcome back, you guys. My name is Joe Ellis. I'm a commercial wedding and portrait photographer in Dallas, Texas, and this is the next episode of Family Photo Life. And today I want to talk about the second lens that you should buy for your camera system, especially if you're a parent photographer. So everybody buys a camera and it comes with a lens, and it's usually a little zoom lens, which means, you know, it goes from like, you can see a lot, a kind of wide angle to kind of telephoto. And that's a really versatile lens, a lens I love and does a lot of jobs. But oftentimes my friends and family are asking me, well, what do I buy next or how do I make my, my photos make, look more professional? And so I always have the same advice when people ask me what they should get next for their camera system. It's always a small, fast, prime lens. And so my favorite lens in the Olympus lineup for an everyday carry, the one I run out of the house with when I'm taking photographs of my kids, is this little lens right here. This is the Olympus 25mm f1.8. So this is a normal lens, which means it's like kind of in the middle of the zoom range, and it can do a lot of jobs. And it has two huge benefits over the zoom that it comes with your camera. Number one, you can shoot in lower light. And the reason is because there's a bigger hole in the lens than in this one over here, you can let in more light at the same time, which means you don't have to use a flash if you're inside. The second reason is that being an f1.8 lens, the other thing you gain is that you can throw the background of your photographs way out of focus. And that makes for really beautiful portraits and moments because it helps you direct the eye of your viewer to where you want it to be. So I want to take a bunch of photos with this lens and with this lens to kind of show you what the differences are and how the pictures look and give you guys an idea of why you might want to switch from using the zoom that came with your camera to a small prime lens like this one. So let's jump to the computer after I take these photos and then we'll talk about the differences in the pictures. Yeah. Hey guys, we're back in the office, and so let's start looking at some photographs. So I wanna show you guys at a base level what the difference is between shooting with a fast prime lens like this 25 millimeter f1.8 and a kit zoom like the one you get with your camera. What does the actual difference in the pictures look like? And so what we're really talking about here is the aperture that we get to use. And the aperture of a lens, of course, is just the size of the opening in the lens, okay? So it's how much light can I let through this lens at one time? The bigger the size of the opening, the more light you can get through. So this f1.8 lens is, lets in around four to eight times as much light at any one, uh, in any one picture as this lens does, okay? So that means that I can do two things. I can, first of all, work in less light. So if I need to work in an indoor environment, for example, and make photographs where I don't want to use a flash, then I can do that with a fast prime. I have a harder time doing that with a zoom lens because it would require longer and longer shutter speeds than it does with this lens, with this 25 millimeter lens. So um, the other thing that really is really helpful with a fast prime is that it allows us, because of its maximum aperture, to throw the background of our photographs out of focus. And so those are two things we're gonna concentrate on today, kind of those key advantages and why those advantages might be ones that are more important to you than having a zoom. So first let's look at what the difference in the photographs look like. Okay, so here I've got a pretty bread and butter example of what um, two pictures look like, one taken with this kit zoom and one taken with this prime lens. So on the left hand side here, we have a shot taken at 25 millimeters at f4, f4 and a half, which is the uh, biggest aperture I can get on the zoom at 25 millimeters. And then of course, with the 25 millimeter prime, I shot wide open at f1.8. And so you can see the big difference in the way the background is rendered between the two photographs. Now the really beautiful thing about the Prime, of course, is because we have that extra background blur, it really allows us to eliminate distractions in the background. And that really helps uh, hold the attention of the viewer where we want it. 
on the left-hand photograph taken with the zoom, the first thing we do is we will notice the subject, but the second thing we do, if there's detail in the background, is that our eye starts to wander around and look for other things that we recognize. And so oftentimes, uh, professional photographers and portrait people love to photograph with very fast apertures because it just helps eliminate distractions in their compositions. Okay, so let's keep going. So here's a few images we took out at the park of Vivian on her roller skates, on her inline skates. And um, this first image here is a picture of her kind of barreling down the hill at me. And so I've done a couple of things. I turned on the continuous tracking so that the uh, camera is focusing as she's moving towards me. And I'm shooting at f1.8 in aperture priority so that I can get the shallowest possible depth of field. So in this image, what's really nice is that um, because we're using that fast maximum aperture, letting a lot of light into the camera, um, at one time, I got to use one four thousandth of a second as a shutter speed. And what that did was really freeze her perfectly in space, right? Even though she's moving really quickly towards me, there's absolutely no blur in this picture. The second thing it did is that it did render the background of the photograph out of focus for me, which is awesome because it really eliminated any distraction that's back there. As you look at the background of this photograph, it's just soft enough that you're not really thinking about it and not really know, and, and knowing that there's nothing there really to look at. And so that really makes it a much better photograph than it was taken at a bigger aperture like, or a smaller aperture like f11 or f16. Okay, so this next image really demonstrates super shallow depth of field. So in this image, I focused on her fingertips as she was sort of spinning around. And what's happening here is that um, her fingertip is in focus. By the time we get to her elbow, it's really starting to go pretty soft. And by the time we get to the tree in the background, it's really super soft. Now in this case, I pointed the camera as a back, at a background that I knew would be busy and have a lot of elements in it because I want to show you guys what that sort of out of focus area might look like when it's not something flat like a sky. So in this case, we have a tree that's backlit and what you're seeing is tons of little highlight points, little circles of light. And it has a really interesting look. And I really like it, but it definitely um, is a different way of seeing a photograph. So just know that depending on the distance um, from you to your background, the uh, vast aperture is going to react in different ways. And the more complicated your background is, the, um, the more you're going to see different out of focus elements rendered in different ways in your pictures. Okay. So the next one here is super simple. Um, I just included this just to remind us that, you know, if we're just taking very basic portraits of our kids and we just want a nice out of focus background, having a fast frame is super helpful because it just takes the background, turns it to butter, and becomes a really easy, easy way to get a nice clean portrait of our kids. Okay, this next one is important because it really demonstrates what a chameleon of a lens that the 25 millimeter is. In any system, uh, any camera system that you have, whether it's a 35 millimeter camera system, an APS-C camera system, or a micro four thirds camera system, you're going to find what's called a normal lens. A normal lens is the middle of the focal range. So on a 35 millimeter camera system, um, it's gonna be a 50 millimeter lens. On an APS-C camera, it's gonna be closer to a 35 millimeter lens. And on a micro four thirds camera, it's a 25 millimeter lens. And what that really means is that anything on my Olympus cameras, any lens that's uh, longer than 25 millimeters is considered a telephoto lens. And anything that is less than 25 millimeters is considered a wide angle lens. And so the sitting right in the middle at 25, um, I really feel like the 25 millimeter prime is a real chameleon because you can move in close to somebody and with that vast maximum aperture, you can really simulate what looks like a, um, a nice portrait lens. Uh, which would be typically be like a telephoto. If you move back 15 or 20 feet or 20 or 30, 30 feet or whatever, um, you can simulate what looks like a moderate wide angle lens. And so I really feel like um, when you look at the kit zoom that you have and look at what you can do zooming with your feet with a 25 millimeter prime, you can see the 25 can really offer a lot of the same looks as your zoom lens can, but with the huge added benefit of that fast maximum aperture, being able to work in lower light, and having those out of focus backgrounds. So in this image of Vivian, um, I really feel it, it feels like a, a wide angle lens, um, but it's not, it's just taken with a 25 from a little bit further back. And I, I love the fact that the 25 can do all of that for me. Okay, so here is a studio uh, portrait of my niece. 
And what I love about this is that um, this is taken in, um, you know, right above her, and we're sort of playing peekaboo <laughs> with the camera. And um, what is really amazing about the 25 millimeter lens is that it has a really wonderful working distance. And what I mean by working distance is that typically speaking, if you're taking a portrait of somebody with a 25 millimeter lens, you're gonna be between about two feet and about 15 feet. And in those ranges, you can get anything from a headshot to like a full length portrait. And what's great there is that in that range of, let's say, 2 to 15 feet, it's really easy for you to connect and interact and talk to and direct your, your subject. Um, if you were to use a 150 millimeter lens and still get similar compositions of full length to portrait, to headshot, you're going to need to be much further away. It's harder to communicate, it's harder for them to see what's going on, and it just makes for a very different experience. So in this case, if I had used a longer lens on this picture, I would have had to have been on a ladder. And that would have ruined it because I wouldn't be able to get the same reactions out of her. Uh, conversely, if I had used a wide angle lens, I would have had to have been too close to her and that might have been scary. <laughs> so the 50 millimeter lens was the perfect focal length for this kind of photograph. Okay, so this next image is um, taken on a trip we made to uh, a local Texas lake to do some mountain bike riding, letting the kids kind of get out there on the dirt paths and have fun on their bikes. And I really wanted to um, make some what I would call environmental uh, portraits of them. So in this case, I took the 25 millimeter lens and I backed up about 15 or 20 feet because I really wanted to create more context. And so the fast aperture in this case is still helping me. If you notice in the foreground of this image and in the background, they're still out of focus. The grass in the foreground is soft and the trees are soft. But the sharpest area of the image where Nicholas is, is drawing our attention. And so again, that fast aperture is adding some elegance to the composition. Um, but the 50 millimeter or the 25 millimeter focal range is giving me the ability to sort of simulate a moderate wide angle. So I love this lens. Again, very chameleon, very handy, and that vast maximum aperture does a lot for me. Um, more than I would say um, any uh, zoom lens does. Okay, this next story is really important because um, this is the other key difference between having a uh, kit zoom and a fast prime like the 25. If you want to make photographs in low light, like this one of Vivian in a room practicing her guitar, and you don't want to have to worry about getting a blurry photograph, and you don't have to worry about using a flash, then that f1.8 aperture allows you to do this. So in this case, um, you could put the camera into one of two modes that would help force it to use f1.8 and give you an image just like this one. The first one is you could turn the camera into aperture priority. So right here on the top of the camera is A mode. In A mode, you choose the aperture that you want to use, in this case, f1.8, and the camera handles the rest of the equation for you so that it, you can sort of force it to use that, give you that low light capability, and then you get the, not only the um, nice out of focus backgrounds, but the ability to work in low light. The other thing you can do with a camera like the EM10 Mark III is you could put it into the scene modes and choose portraits. If you choose portrait mode, the camera will bias towards using the fastest possible maximum aperture and it'll give you the exact same thing. So either mode works great. You could of course force the camera into full manual and do all of the settings yourself, but if you're a beginner or you're just getting into this, those are two great modes to kind of start out with. Aperture priority or portrait mode. Okay, um, I want to mention two other things that Olympus cameras did to help make this particular photo. Number one, I turned the camera into silent shutter. And I want to mention this as often as possible because I think it's really critical. If you want to make um, you know, wonderfully authentic portraits of your kids where they are not aware of your presence, where you catch them doing something amazing and you just don't want them reacting to the camera, silent shutter mode could be your best friend. In the EM10 Mark III, you find it in the AP mode. It's marked by a little heart icon and it turns off all sound on the camera. It turns off the shutter sound. The camera makes absolutely no noise as you're making pictures. I think that's amazing and it really helps to get moments of your kids when they just don't know they're being photographed. Um, the other thing I did with the camera is I used the waist level finder a lot when I don't want to seem as conspicuous. So in this case I flip the finder up like this and I can fire from here and it's just a lot less um, sort of noticeable than if you have the camera up to your eye. And so I love both those things about my Olympus cameras. I use them all the time. And all three of those uh, features really help make this kind of picture. 
Okay, this last portrait here, I just want to mention that if you have a fast prime like the 25 and you shoot a picture within a couple of feet, you can completely eliminate a background. And this is a very popular look for pictures of kids. Um, professionals and amateurs use this all the time with their fast primes. But the key to this is having a fast prime lens and then shooting at close to the minimum focusing distance. So as close as you can get and still get a composition that you love means that you will get less and less and less of the background in focus. So in this case, I took this picture with a 25 millimeter lens at about two feet and you can see that the background of the photograph is just like completely gone. So if that's the look you're looking for, a fast prime is definitely what you need. Okay, I wanna show you guys two other photographs here, or maybe three. Um, these are some landscape photographs that I made. And um, I love visiting um, our national parks. Um, I love them to death. I think I've visited close to 40 of them over the years. I love photographing them. I'm not a professional landscape photographer, but I did want to demonstrate that the 50, um, the 25 millimeter lens or the 50 millimeter lens or whatever the normal lens is for your system is an awesome lens for many different genres of photography. So in this case here, we have um, a scene that we rolled up upon in Arches National Park. And what I love about the uh, 25 millimeter in this scenario is that it really feels like an image you could have made from a car window. And the, I love that because the um, 25 millimeter lens is the least conspicuous lens in the entire lineup. It's the least noticed lens. If you take grand landscapes all the time with a super wide angle lens, like a seven millimeter lens, one of the first things that every viewer will notice about your picture for the most part, is that they will sense that you've taken this with a really wide angle lens. And that's because wide angle lenses tend to make foreground elements much larger and background elements much smaller. And so you get this sort of perspective, right? If you shoot with a super telephoto, then you get you, your viewers will sense that as well because they will see a view of something that feels like something they could never see with their eyes, something that's really zoomed in. With a 25 millimeter lens, it sees almost exactly the same way that your eyes do. Um, things in the foreground and things in the background are in the same relative size with a 25 millimeter lens as they are the way you see them when you're just standing in front of them. And so for that reason, it's very, very stealth. So I could have made a great image probably with any lens um, in this particular scenario because it's a really beautiful scene, but I love what a 50 with a 25 millimeter lens did in this scenario. Okay. This next image was an, one I made in Italy. And um, if I'm running out and I don't know what I'm gonna photograph, if I'm just going out for the day and we're gonna take some pictures and run around like tourists, uh, a 25 millimeter lens will always be one that's in my bag. Um, I think it's the, one of the most versatile focal lengths that you can possibly carry. The fast maximum aperture just makes sure that I can shoot in any space that we run into. And um, I really believe that I can make a wide variety of images just by using my feet and what's between my ears to make interesting pictures. So um, if I'm leaving the house and I don't know what I'm gonna shoot, um, oftentimes, maybe 90% of the time, I've got a 25 millimeter lens on my camera. Okay, last story of the night here. Um, this is an image that I made um, at Sequoia National Park. And what's funny about this is that I was out making images at, during this sunset and I made a whole range of images with a super wide lens and a whole range of images with a super telephoto lens. And then um, just as I was sort of thinking that I had it wrapped, I sat down and <laughs> this is the scene that was right in front of me just as it appeared to my eyes. So again, you know, sometimes um, the best focal length is the one that's right here. And that's what a 50 millimeter captures or what a 25 millimeter captures. And I uh, love it and oftentimes overlook it. So I wanted to um, just point out that if you pick up a 25 millimeter lens and it becomes part of your kit, I really think that it can do a ton of jobs. So. Um, that's it for looking at photographs. Um, I would just say to wrap up that I think that um, every photographer at some point in their journey needs to spend time working with a normal lens, with a 25 millimeter lens if you're an Olympus photographer, because it will really teach you how to see. It will make you understand wide angle and telephoto better. And if you shoot with it for long enough, you will learn your preferences. You will learn whether you um, tend to like, favor wide angles or tend to favor telephotos. And it will really help you in learning and refining your style and composition. So um, that's it for me tonight, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit me up in the comments. Um, 
And don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.